there's no day like today to get on with this. I'm just showing you the list of all the votes from the keep or toss video with regards to the candidates that we're going to be dealing with today. And you can see that pretty much across the board there is a balance as to you all seem to agree right there. When I read Orchid Ninja Chris Sun's comment, just keep toss, keep toss, bum, 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 that one was where I thought, hmm, we're twinsies. And then I read Ana Maria's comments and all the fabulous advice that she gave on how to rescue these orchids. Let me tell you, within 24 hours later, I was already doubting what I was about to do anyway while I was filming the original Keep Toss video, which I'm going to link in the description. So I may not remember all the comments. I'm going to put some up on the screen. I'm just going to go by memory based on what I'm thinking, what I thought, how I'm going to deal with some of the orchids. And let's just see what we're up against, honestly. At this point in time, at the end of the video, we'll all be smarter. <laughs> Can you hear the indecision in my voice? <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to start with what I would believe is the easy one first. <clears throat> this is Tolumnia. I don't know the name, but the blooms are orange brown. That was the reference I gave myself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. But to be quite honest, Tolumnia's in this state, totally desiccated. <laughs> There's no chance. So we're just going to make sure that we're going to keep the basket. But this one is a goner, and I don't think I have to fiddle around in front of you. I'm going to be tossing this one. Don't want to waste your time because I have other. Uh, <laughs> let's just move on. This one right here <laughs> is Gyrac Firm Snow White. Would love to try and save her. And let's see what comes out when I take her out. The reason I'm going to try and give this one a go is to see if I can raise the humidity around the leaves. Uh, she does have three fans. They're all super paper thin, totally desiccated. But if I can pull out some lava rock, which I have done and put what's in here into a container, then rest her on the top of that, maybe surrounding the leaves with a little bit more humidity, there might be enough in her to recover her. If, when, but, might, oh, these are not kind of the words I like to use. However, when I saw all your comments and especially some where I'm thinking, yeah, they ignited some hope going into temperatures where I could recover some of them. <clears throat> All of a sudden, that one decision, the way Chris Sun put across her comment, I was all gung-ho. I was of the same opinion. Yeah, now, here we are. We're going to try and do something and see if anything comes of this orchid. <laughs> Don't laugh, please. <laughs> or, well... If you need a good laugh, then okay, go ahead and laugh. At least I can bring a smile to your face. So the idea being something like this and permanently have water at the base. I did contemplate using sphagnum moss. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not starting with the moss thing. It's too precious of a commodity. So I'm not gonna waste it. Lava rock will do the same when it comes to high humidity. And of course, all these orchids are gonna go inside. The ones that I'm saving, they have to now go inside. They are clearly, <laughs> without a doubt, ICU orchids, duh. But yeah, anyway, moving on, let me get another one out of the way. That will be this one, my red sun, red berry. This one I do want to try and save. I love, love, love those rich red blooms. And you know what? This is the one that I was already thinking while filming the original video that I'm going to try and save it by doing what I'm doing now as I did with the previous one. Because if I can get this one to grow some roots, at least to hold on to some roots, I think we could possibly make a difference with this one. <laughs> the ifs and buts. It's a continuing theme in this video.
Right, this one here is my golden fire, another one with beautiful yellow blooms. Now, <laughs> I would like to try and save this one. I know, here we are again. I don't want to risk the basket though to get that out. I mean, the basket and the orchid are a precious commodity, but it's not as if I need to break a basket in order to save this orchid. If I can pull her out with, you know, after removing some of the lava rock, and then I can save my basket. If I destroy the orchid in the process, then, oh, it's a shame, because I did want to give her the best chance and try and revive her. But if the orchid falls apart, I prefer that as opposed to my basket. <laughs> I know, material girl. <laughs> but it worked. Oh, I'm so happy that worked quickly. <laughs> I didn't have to faff around. <gasps> oh, but what I can do is remove the back end here, maybe, without too much fuss, because that's just going to rot. So we'll give that a very, very careful, gracious twist and a rip, you know, as you do. <laughs> but you see, there's hope. Look, if this was, oh, you see, yeah, this was in the original video, the slivers of roots. Oh, there's more hope in this one than any of them, because there are slivers of roots. So let's see how deep she has to go. I think that would work. No need for lava rock underneath. Let's see how the water level is when I put some water in there. I really don't want the bases to be touching the water. But maybe in some cases, I'm going to have to raise the water level and lower it again, just so that the roots do get access to it. But there's also wicking from the old roots. So maybe, just maybe, we can save this one. Look, if this was fall, I don't know if I just mentioned that, but I'm kind of winging it with this video because I'm so undecided. Your comments were super helpful. And then again, not so much if you know what I mean, but it was wonderful to get your input. So yeah, if this were fall, none of this rescue mission business would be happening. So I saved my basket. And now we have one that is so tiny with its growth at the base that I don't want to move it. I'm not going to toss it, but I have to do something because I can't keep misting down here. And that's just going to rot everything out long term. Right now, doing it once and one and a half times a day because the second time I go around, I only miss the bottom of the basket. I'm going to rot out these roots, but you see how elevated it is? And I don't want to disturb the orchid either. So I'm thinking, let me get her stabilized. I am thinking of just putting more lava rock around the base for a little bit more of humidity and water retention. Ana Maria said in the comments that Tulumnias are very, very thirsty. In my climate, I tend to agree with that. And that is why I have them in lava rock and not mounted. I can't put them in sphagnum moss. Ana Maria, if you watch this video, and I hope that if you don't understand what I was trying to explain in my comments, check out my video, my conditions. Maybe that'll also help clear things up and I probably didn't explain myself well in the comments, but I can't put these into sphagnum moss. During the summer, okay, fine. During the winter, oh, I'd be in trouble. And well, another Tulumnia video will come out eventually because I did the semi-hydro with the two Tulumnias and during the winter, we've had some not so positive developments. So that is why I cannot go with a sphagnum moss as the media, as a permanent setup. So with this one, all I'm going to do is just raise the level of the lava rock around the base and maybe remove Baloo's hair. Just, you know, <laughs> for a change. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to do with her. Fingers crossed. Now we come to the trichocentrum. Can't say the media didn't work. This is a great root system back in the day. It was all because I didn't pay attention and scale got to it. Oh my goodness. So I thought I would add in this footage just so that you could see 
that the lava rock is in actual fact a great media for the wet and dry cycle that Tolumnias like, but also the fact that the lava rock will retain a lot of water. This was a fantastic orchid and I blew it because of scale. I am so cross with myself. I messed this up so, so bad. Trichocentrum tigrina. She was, she was, in my mind, destined for the bin. Keyword, was. I know this looks like nothing, but I'm gonna give it a go. Because if I have any reasoning about what went wrong here, it was my setup, I forgot her outside during a cooler night. She seems to be extremely vulnerable when that happens, even if it's just for one night. Um, I think I'm wasting my time, to be honest, but she's also a hard orchid to come by. I'm just wondering if there's a little bit of miracle left in her. So yeah, I'm gonna keep her. <laughs> Have a chuckle at this point in time. Chuckle time, intermission. The easiest thing would be just to take them out and put it into a plastic bag that I have off camera. <clears throat> that would be the easiest part because I don't know if I can take any of the roots along with me to put her into a setup of just lava rock. Even as I'm doing this, I've got my eyebrows raised at myself, as in, you're, you're, you're nuts. You're nuts. This orchid is history. She's, t she's telling you everything you need to know. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just going to ignore that, like, as you do. Ah, Nina, Nina, Nina. Let's see if we... Look, if I mess this up, even trying to get her off, then the decision is done. But I got to give it a go. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Um <coughs> Shall we? <laughs> Let's try. Okay, this is not a self-watering or a semi-hydro pot. This is a pot that has holes at the bottom with a little saucer. It's going to be a constant every second, every third day of flushing should this orchid not collapse completely within the next 24 hours. Anyway, what are we gonna do about supporting her, keeping her upright? I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a wire contraption thing. I honestly believe I had a little bit more to work with rhizome wise. <clears throat> one could only dream. So normally I just do one, but you see how she flops. I wanted to wrap the wire around the base at least once to stop the flopping. Seeing as I have such a brittle, poorly orchid, I'm kind of afraid that now I'm just going to snap another leaf off. But now, it, at least she won't flop as much. Let's see if we can't tighten that a little bit. If for no other reason, maybe this video serves as a point of amusement. <laughs> You can tell the whole time I'm not convinced, hey. But no joke. <laughs> I'm not doing this to then have more material to film in the future. I really sincerely want to see if I can't save these orchids. Get the supports in first. <laughs> and then fill with lava rock. I started the base with large lava rock just to, you know, cover some space. But my intention is to fill her up with small lava rock so that I have plenty of humidity around her. Sorry if that hand covered everything. I'm sorry. Your vote in the comments. 
Is this even worth the effort? Let me know. I think she looks pretty good. <laughs> My hope percentage has just increased by another 20. If I was at 40 <laughs> when I started to get her off the mount, I'm now back up to, let's say, 60. Something like that. Yes, and daily pouring water through the pot. Not because of oxygen, not because of gas exchange, not because there are probably any viable roots in here, but because of very high humidity, microclimate around the leaves that are already showing their sign of desiccation. Sorry, poor little baby. I'm so sorry. I messed you up too. This orchid, my Araguayensis, when the majority of you said keep, they're still green, they're still life. I was like, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the original video, I did not tell you how badly I wanted to keep an orchid or not. This was the one where I'm thinking, I want to keep this orchid. I don't want to lose her. And yes, I admit I was already on the interwebs looking for a replacement just in case. <sighs> I wasn't lucky. MSB Orchidane has them, but their webpage is shut down. I can't order. Anyway, let's see. <clears throat> Normally, I do not disturb orchids that are in this state of neglect or disrepair. But you can see from the previous video, I've already lost one growth right here. And that was rotted at the base. Plus, I've lost the leaves back here. So she's looking even worse now. And we're not talking that long ago when I filmed that other video. You can see the leaf is yellowing right here. That's exactly what happened with this. These being the two remaining growths. So a rescue orchid is something I very, very rarely disturb. But we might as well have a look at this one and see if there's any life left at the base. Because if there's rot at the stem, then there's nothing that's going to work with this orchid. We have no viable roots. We're creating a huge mess now. Of course, I try to keep my catch tray as tidy as possible so that the workload afterwards isn't that bad, but here we are. Anywho, and you know, I have a media bucket. Too eager to get in here, but she's a goner. And I so desperately wanted to keep her. If I can ever find a replacement of the Araguayense, I am replacing her. I think I know what went wrong here. The Ceramis and the Lekka should not have been together. It's either Lekka or it's Ceramis. It's too cold in my climate in the winter for a small orchid like this. And she is a mini, she's a small Cattleya. You can see that the base, there's rot right there. Yikes. This was really the one where I was reading your comments and I was thinking, oh yes, they told me to keep her. They told me to keep her. <laughs> I'm so happy. But nope, she's gone. Boo. Boo. Anyway, maybe the orchid gods will put her in my path once again. All right, we have one more to go. Are you still with me? <laughs> Like this video, please. It would help with my self-esteem. Thank you so, so much. And yes, subscribe. That'll make me feel so good as well. Thank you. Here we are. The beautiful, the wonderful, the forever weird Vanda Green Hopper came into my collection and it was just weird from jump. And yeah, I've had enough. Now, I could put her into a bottle setup, I suppose, but I've had enough. These spots, they just don't go away. They've always been there. Now I'm losing leaves up and among the stem. Just checking. No, that's just dust. It's not pests. Hope you can see that. So she's coming out. I do like my orchids to look nice and presentable as well. Yes, I will always deal with spotting, with dry leaf tips. My climate, low humidity, doesn't permit for many orchids to enjoy my very low humidity. 
So I do the best I can, but what I don't like is an orchid that arrives in my collection, is a weird one, no matter what I do, and if I want to cultivate it properly, I have to put a garbage bag around it. I mean, you know, nope. There are some root nubbins up here. Oh, you guys, please don't tell me. Nina, stop. Hang on a second. Oh, <laughs> I should never have peeled those leaves back. I should never have peeled those leaves back. Because when I see that, my mind is already, which container do I have that could work for this orchid? I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I managed to yank off that leaf off camera now we've <laughs> I've been here before I have been here before and eight months later the orchid was still tossed oh you guys okay okay let's let's see no need to rush into any decisions does that look just dumb first of all let's see what we're hello working with we're working with a clean rhizome okay for starters, we're working with a clean rhizome. If I want her in that pot, I want her much lower. We're working with viable roots. I know, you're probably going, no, she needs all that. And yes, she does. Absolutely, she does. Need everything that she's got going for her. But I want her lower in the pot. And if I'm going to do this, oh, I'm, I'm cross with myself. <laughs> Sorry for that jiggle, I'm sorry. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it in such a way that she is so low that the water can rise all the way up to the neck. Okay, for now that's gonna work. I've got some calcium nitrate here. Oh my goodness, you guys, what am I doing? This is me when I see root nubbins, classic. I had the garbage bag ready for her just to go in and save my media. Uh, what a video, huh? What a video. We have, we have bumps. And another bump. So if I keep her positioned like this, there's a bump also that is completely submerged. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have our three telumnias we're gonna try and save. That's three out of five. Goodbye to the other two. We lost the Araguayensis. Now that breaks my heart a lot. Probably I'm compensating that loss with my green hopper because before the Araguayense, we dealt with the Trichocentrum. So yeah, that's probably what's going on with the green hopper in my decision-making process. So you see that little dish down there? I mean, it's not airtight. It's not a semi-hydro thing. Once the water has poured through, there will be a little bit of residual water at the base, but yeah. I'm going to be doing this every second to every third day, depending on the temperatures. And then we'll hopefully maybe see a new growth and be surprised. I don't know. This was awesome. And I'm going to do it again in the future, keep or toss, because you guys got me thinking. Those comments were amazing. And also because the comments in the original video are so helpful for anybody else that is looking at a video like that and is looking for more information where their climate can permit such rescue attempts. Here I am in southern Spain trying to deal with what I've got. I've made mistakes with my telumnias, don't know what on earth is going wrong with my green hopper. Even though, yes, I've treated it, it had fungicide, it was not a copper victim, but I do have Fysan and I have insecticidal soap. All of that was done in the past years. Anyway, my trichocentrum was an error on my part. Wrong setup, possibly. Environmental issues could be a problem, but I figured it is worth giving this one a go with a new setup and see how it recovers. Anyway, with the exception of the green hopper, everybody is going inside now, including myself. I could do with some iced tea roundabout now and just to settle my mind because, well, <laughs> we shall see in a couple of months what is going to happen. Hope you stick around for the updates. Like I said, it's not like I needed more material to film, but here we are. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your food for thought. That was impressive. Meanwhile, what was going on in my brain, not so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video regardless. Let me know in the comments what you think of this now. If you haven't seen the original video, there is a link in the description. Have a look at that. 
How did we get here? Ahem. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.